Dan Cohen joins us now. Dan, a great pleasure uh, to uh, see you here on the on the mother of all talk shows. I promise you we'll talk about Haiti, but I wanted to uh, ask you about the Yemen first, because I know you have, like me, an abiding interest in it. Joe Biden said he'd end the Yemen war. What happened next? Well, it's incredible uh, that that series of events, how that played out. I mean, as a candidate, progressives, basically many of many of us, myself excluded, I did not for, vote for Joe Biden, I will say, but we were we were sheepdog to voting for Joe Biden on the uh, premise that he would end the war in Yemen. Um, this genocidal, horrific machine that is uh, starving children to death. And this was the reason that we had to vote for Joe Biden. And as soon as he get in, get in, uh, came into office, he made a statement saying that he was ending offensive operations in, in Yemen, uh, U.S. support for offensive operations. But it was really just um, a trick because he didn't say, well, we're ending defensive operations. And then... Uh, so it, w it was just a lie. And then the support for offensive operations continued. And he was hailed by progressive media. I remember at the time, oh, thank you, Joe Biden, for ending U.S. support in this horrible war. And he got all of this credit for doing absolutely nothing. And now, what, two years later, Bernie Sanders makes the most mild attempt, gets browbeaten and withdraws without even trying. It's just about the most um, pathetic uh, display in in recent memory um and it really just symbolizes everything wrong with the democratic party and why it's you know where where the left goes to die well it's uh it's a simple morality tale uh don't trust these people the next time they come selling you that dodgy bill of goods uh i wonder uh, what bernie sanders does now how does he hold his head up now. It is an extra, it's an act of political suicide by Bernie Sanders. Have we, we've, Dan is, uh, Dan is frozen. He has every right to be in My. the current climate. I'm <laughs> frozen too. Are you there, Dan? I'm back. <laughs> side that Excellent. was okay yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm saying that this was uh this was an act of political suicide by sanders as you say his motion wasn't up to much but to withdraw it under manners from the white house uh when the white house is occupied by a man who made ending the yemen war just about his only foreign policy promise it is extraordinary isn't it yeah, it's just an in incredible display of cynicism from Joe Biden and whoever's controlling him, because clearly he's not in charge, and, 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 and a total display of cowardice from the progressives led by Bernie Sanders. And it's, you know, honestly, it's typical of Bernie Sanders at this point who um, allowed the Democratic Party in 2016 to undermine him and put Hillary Clinton forward as the candidate who would go on to lose to Donald Trump and then basically um, allowed them to do the same thing in 2020. So this is Bernie Sanders, who ultimately just always bows to the powers. He kisses the rings of the Democratic Party. And that's exactly what he did uh, with this Yemen resolution. Now, uh, talk about timing. Uh, tell us about your uh, film on Haiti and describe, if you will, uh, since your camera stopped rolling, what's happened? Um, well, so the film is called Another Vision Inside Haiti's Uprising. And myself and Haiti Liberté journalist Kim Ives and I uh, made it starting in July 2021, right when the president of Haiti, Jovenel Moise, was assassinated uh, in his house. And we basically went to investigate what the situation was. Um, and there's no clarity about the really any any clarity about the assassination of the president. But what is clear and what we show in the film, which is a three part series, is that there is a popular uprising going on in Haiti. And at the center of that 
an armed federation called the G9 or the, the revolutionary forces of the G9 family and allies, a bit of a mouthful, commonly known as the G9, led by a figure named Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier. He's a former cop who uh, uh, has uh, now gone completely against the system. Um, and he has federated a series of what are essentially neighborhood self-defense groups um, in order to overthrow the the ruling class, which has kept Haiti um, in chains and in the the worst possible conditions for for decades and decades, um, and so if you Google anything about Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier, you'll read in Western media that he's a mass murderer, that he's um, committed a series of massacres, um, and all of these horrible things about him. But what our investigation in the documentary, uh, which you'll see in, in the first episode, it's a, as I said, it's three parts. Um, we show that this is uh, is a um, essentially CIA disinformation campaign to portray this revolutionary figure or would be revolutionary figure as some kind of mass murderer. Very similar um, to the Duma attacks, uh, the, the, the Duma incident in Syria. Um, this sort of thing, these sort of disinformation operations. So um, we also show um, the formation of this group. We show its revolutionary activity, its social programs, um, providing for the, the residents of the neighborhoods. Um, and then we show the, the kind of ideological struggle that they are in um, trying to you know get people who are living in these horrible conditions, living in sewage, uh, literal lakes of sewage um, to to understand what their what their program is. So um, we you know really encourage everyone to watch it because it's it's a it's a crucial moment as the U.S. is is a dead set on uh, U.S. In, on an invasion uh, of Haiti once again. Kim has been on the show several times actually, and he warned us uh, a year ago. Uh, he warned us that uh, this characterization of the insurgency, the uprising in Haiti as gangs and as uh, purely criminal elements was a serious mistake. Even if, of course, in the, uh, in the grand scheme of things, the real criminals in Haiti are not living uh, down in the slums. They're living uh, up on the hills in their white... Uh, 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 antebellum uh, mansions, but he was making the point that there will be an effort to mischaracterize the, this mass of proletarian and even lumpen proletarian masses in Haiti as purely criminal, as, uh, as a, a paving of the way for another American invasion. So you reckon the U.S. are going to invade and what will they meet when they do in that case? Well, yes, Kim is. You're you're absolutely right in in, in your analysis there, and and Kim in what you described from Kim too. I mean, the the conflation of criminal gangs, what you can credibly call gangs in Haiti, uh, with the complete opposite, with anti crime gangs, um, has been that's that's been the the aim and result of this disinformation campaign. Um, in order to discredit the only force that would really stand up to a U.S. invasion. Um, the prospects of a U.S. invasion of Haiti are very, very real. The thing is, the U.S. knows that um, Haiti Haitians are very sensitive to foreign interference, particularly from the United States. And in the event of a mass invasion, you know, 20, 25,000 Marines uh, entering Haiti, there would be some kind of mass uprising against it. So the U.S. is seeking to um, give it a sort of multilateral uh, look and do it in a more covert way, um, whether through the U.N. Security Council, where it has been attempting to to get uh, the other uh, members on board for for an intervention or an invasion, um, but has failed because of opposition uh, from Russia and China um, and is now seeking a number of other ways. But the U.S. very much prefers to um, do it in a in covert operations, you know, not the Bush style kind of mass invasion, but Obama style uh, secret, you know, secretly and, and using proxies. Um, and it has been ha it has been training um, forces inside the Haitian National Police and is putting forth 
the opposition right now actually um there is a process of regime change what i th what i could what i would call regime change in haiti uh spurred by the united states where it is abandoning the ruling party of the PHTK, which is a uh, sort of the neo duvalierist party um, of of de facto Prime Minister Ariel Henry, because he's seen as a U.S. backed dictator, and that's not good for U.S. aims. So the U.S. is now sanctioning several members of that party and several of the big oligarchs uh, who are who who are allied with it. And the U.S. is in the process of switching to the political opposition, which is uh, it has also groomed. It's called the Montana Accord, um, and it's equally as as corrupt and and uh, elite. Um, and that's the the plan is to put the Montana Accord into power. And then once the Montana Accord is in is in power, then the U.S. Uh, will initiate this um, this invasion of sorts. Um, and and, you know, what happens there remains to be seen. But, um, you know, the U.S., like I said, is very sense. Is, it knows that Haitians are very sensitive to to the idea of uh, U.S. Uh, uh, U.S. interference meddling. And so that's why uh, they're very careful about this. Indeed, they were the first uh, country to uh, kick out the colonialists and slavers, in this case uh, of France, centuries ago. They are a proud people. And uh, they've been going through this agony. Now, you're the expert, not me, but it seems to me that since the U.S. overthrew Aristide, the, the situation has gone from bad to worse in Haiti. Is that right? Well, without a doubt. I mean, after uh, the the U.S. cooed Aristide for the second time, um, there have basically been a series of Haiti has become a complete picture of a neoliberal state, even even worse than it was before, where there are no services provided whatsoever for the people. Um, and it's purely uh, uh, it's an NGO state where, you know, foreign billionaire NGOs um, basically pour money in that is then siphoned back into the into the pockets of you know contractors here in Washington DC that was particularly the case um after the 2010 earthquake when some 13 billion dollars were pledged to Haiti from the so-called international community and approximately 1% of that went to actual Haitians um and this was you know a project led by the Clintons and that and that's been the the regime that has been in ever since is the PHTK the one that uh, Hillary Clinton, basically, as Secretary of State in 2010, 2011, put into place. But now that regime has been so sullied uh, in the eyes of Haitians, and correctly so. It's a completely corrupt, horrific regime, um, That, but it's outlived its usefulness for the United States. And so um, now the United States, as I said, no. is putting forth this other, this other group. I think that the uh, I think it was Joe Biden. Correct me if I'm wrong. Who once said that it wouldn't matter to the U.S. Uh, if Haiti sank to the bottom of the sea, uh, apart from the fact that it's inhabited by many millions of human beings, what is the significance of Haiti to the Americans? You know, I think when Joe Biden said that, I don't know exactly what he's thinking, but uh, Haiti is very strategic for the United States. So sort of a mischaracterization of the role that that Haiti plays in kind of the the, the great chessboard, the grand chessboard for the United, United States. Of course, it provides incredible amounts of, of cheap labor, huge amounts of cheap labor, cheap labor. And in the bifurcation of the global economy with uh, U.S. corporations moving out of China, for example, um, there's a there is an emphasis on looking for uh, sources of cheap labor once again. And Haiti provides that with its sweatshops um, where the oligarchs make huge amounts of money. And then if you look, there are also resources, uh, natural gas, oil. Um, that has been found, which is, you know, obviously important for the United States. There are, uh, I believe, uranium deposits um, and others. And then if you look at the, uh, the, the region, there's a lot of revolutionary activity in the Caribbean. Um, the U.S. fears that Haiti could become another Cuba, the island just, you know, some uh, uh, just to its west. And so, um, uh, the U.S. will not or w would not like to allow uh, Haiti to fall out of its grasp because then, of course, what happens with the Dominican Republic, what happened with with which it shares uh, uh, the island, 
what happens um, with uh, Puerto Rico to its east. Venezuela is nearby. So uh, the the prospect of a, of a revolution um, in which Haiti falls out of or, or takes itself out of uh, the U.S. orbit is very threatening. And that's that's a primary reason that uh, the United States is so intent on carrying out a military invasion to stamp out this uh, revolutionary activity. Well, as I said, great timing. Where can people see the first episode, Dan? You can go to uh, my YouTube channel. It's called Uncaptured Media. That's what all these letters are behind me. Um, and all three episodes are on there for free. There's 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 three episodes. Um, it, uh, and you know, I just really encourage everyone to to watch it and and understand what is what's going on in Haiti. There's not really anyone else reporting on this, and there's frankly a lot of confusion. This um, CIA disinformation campaign has been incredibly successful, and I think you know ourselves and myself and and Haiti Liberté, which is a Haitian led. Haiti Liberté has led the way on this. This is Haitians leading the way on this project, really. Um, we're the only ones that have been challenging this this kind of State Department CIA narrative. So, um, you know, I appreciate you having us on, George, and and everyone just just check it out. Another vision Welcome. inside uh, Haiti's uprising is the documentary. More power to your elbow, Dan Cohen. Thanks for joining us.